Antarctica is the most extreme place on Earth. Temperatures plunge below 94 degrees Fahrenheit. Hurricane force winds sweep across endless ice. And for months at a time, the sun never rises. It's a place where forgetting your coat or proper gear could be deadly. And yet, scattered across this frozen desert are more than 70 research stations, housing about 3,000 people year-round. Outposts built not just to survive, built to thrive in conditions we were never meant to endure. From bases that rise with the snow, to stations built on skis to glide past cracking ice. These are some of the most remarkable feats of engineering on the planet. Today we're taking a closer look at Antarctica's research stations, how they were built, how they work, and what it takes to live at the bottom of the world. Before we explore the stations themselves, it's worth asking, how do you build anything in Antarctica at all? The continent is bigger than Europe and buried beneath up to 2.5 miles of ice. Winter temperatures drop lower than dry ice. Storms can shut down work for weeks, and every single piece of equipment has to be shipped or flown across the world during one short, fragile summer window. There are no roads between stations. Supplies move on cargo planes fitted with skis, or in tractor convoys crawling across snow for weeks at a time. The construction crews, they sleep in insulated containers, wearing heated suits, and race the weather to assemble prefabricated modules before the ice closes in again. And everything here has to run perfectly 100% of the time, because even forgetting a single bolt can mean waiting an entire year for the next supply run. Against all odds, nations have still built dozens of permanent outposts, each with its own visions, its own style, its own mission. And trust me, you're about to see everything from mobile bases on skis to zero-emission eco-labs that look straight out of the future. No place shows the scale of that effort better than McMurdo Station, the closest thing Antarctica has to a city. Built on volcanic rock at the southern tip of Ross Island, McMurdo is by far the largest station on the continent. In summer, it houses over a thousand people. Scientists, engineers, pilots, cooks, mechanics, even baristas at the base's coffee shop. McMurdo is the logistical backbone of America's Antarctic program. Every year, cargo ships and giant C-17 aircraft bring supplies here, which are then distributed inland by ski-equipped planes or massive tractor convoys along the South Pole Traverse, a snow highway stretching nearly a thousand miles. But McMurdo itself is changing. In 2019, the U.S. launched a $400 million modernization project, replacing more than 100 aging buildings, with just six ultra-efficient interconnected structures, designed in the U.S. and shipped south in pieces. The new buildings feature triple-pane windows, heavy insulation, and layouts designed for both science and mental health. When it's finished, McMurdo will stand among the most advanced science hubs on the continent, a frozen city built for the future. Even if some other stations are already there. More on that a little later. While McMurdo is busy and coastal, if you head further inland, the U.S. also operates one of the most isolated stations on Earth the Amundsen-Scott South Pole Station, sitting at 90 degrees south on more than 9,000 feet of shifting glacial ice. The station rests on hydraulic jacks that can lift the entire building above snow that piles up about eight inches every year. Its aerodynamic shape cuts through brutal winds, diesel generators provide power, and waste heat is recycled to melt ice into drinking water. In summer, solar panels help carry the load. Inside, there's a greenhouse built with NASA's help to grow fresh vegetables during the endless polar night. Outside, giant telescopes gaze into the clearest skies on Earth, searching for cosmic background radiation and clues about the origins of the universe. The South Pole Station isn't just about survival. It's about pushing the boundaries of science in one of the most remote places on the planet. If you think that's extreme, Russia takes it one step further with Vostok Station, the place that holds the world record for the coldest temperature ever recorded on Earth. Perched at 11,000 feet above sea level, Vostok once hit an unimaginable minus 128.5 degrees Fahrenheit. 
That's colder than dry ice and nearly as cold as the surface of Mars. In 2024, Russia unveiled a brand new wintering complex, a 460-foot-long chain of prefabricated modules, each raised on 36 steel pylons to stay above drifting snow. Every module is wrapped in 31-inch thick insulated walls built to trap heat and keep researchers alive. In temperatures, no human body could survive outdoors. Supplies arrive only after weeks-long convoys across the ice. Inside, Vostok now supports up to 35 scientists in summer and 15 in winter, complete with a gym, a sauna, and even a small cinema room. Everything a scientist needs to be happy, for the most part. But Vostok isn't just about endurance. It sits atop Lake Vostok, a subglacial body of water buried beneath two and a half miles of ice. Drilling here could reveal secrets about Earth's climate history, and maybe even microbial life in environments similar to the icy moons of Jupiter and Saturn. Russia proves you can endure almost anything, but the United Kingdom takes it in a much different direction. Believe it or not, Britain's Holly 6 station has been designed to literally move when the ice beneath begins to grow unstable. The UK can do this because the station sits on massive hydraulic legs with skis. But what's crazy is that this isn't just theory. They actually tested it back in 2017, when Holly 6 was towed 14 miles inland in one of the most extreme building relocations ever attempted. The station itself is a chain of bright blue and red modules, each raised high above the snow and connected by flexible walkways. Inside, researchers enjoy everything from laboratories and living quarters to a library and, believe it or not, a climbing wall. Holly 6 isn't just about comfort, it's famous for its science. In 1985, data from this station helped reveal the ozone hole over Antarctica, sparking global efforts to ban ozone-depleting chemicals. Today, Holly 6 continues to monitor space weather, atmospheric changes, and the fragile dynamics of the ice shelf beneath it. Not all stations are coastal or can literally move when they feel like it. Some stand alone in the very heart of Antarctica, one of the most isolated and brutal places on Earth. And that's where the French and the Italians built one of their biggest and most advanced facilities, Concordia. At Dome C, more than 10,000 feet above sea level, sits Concordia Station, an outpost so remote that for nine months of the year, no plane or resupply can reach it. Temperatures fall below minus 112 degrees Fahrenheit, and the air is so thin that oxygen levels resemble those on high mountain peaks. For the 12 to 15 people who live here during the winter, life is closer to a Mars mission than anything else on Earth. The station consists of two cylindrical towers raised above the snow, one for living, one for research, connected by an elevated corridor. Wastewater is recycled, snow is melted for drinking water, and every system is designed for self-sufficiency. Concordia is invaluable for science. It sits near the site of the famous EPICA ice core, which revealed 800,000 years of Earth's climate history. Researchers here now aim to drill back 1.5 million years, but Concordia's role goes beyond climate. The European Space Agency uses it as Mars's simulation site, studying how humans cope with isolation, darkness, and extreme conditions. So yeah, Concordia can be brutal. It can't be pleasant living in a place so harsh, it's often compared to Mars. But Belgium took a completely different approach, proving that even in the most unforgiving environment on Earth, you can still go green. Their Princess Elizabeth Station isn't just one of the most futuristic bases in Antarctica. It's one of the only fully sustainable ones. There's nothing else quite like it on the ice. Opened in 2009, it was the world's first zero-emission Antarctic research station, powered entirely by wind turbines and solar panels. Its compact, aerodynamic design includes nine layers of insulation and a smart microgrid that balances supply and demand in real time. Getting it built? No small feat. The entire station was prefabricated in Belgium, packed into 100 containers, shipped south, and reassembled on solid granite in East Antarctica. Princess Elizabeth can host about 50 researchers in summer and has laboratories, living quarters, and even an experimental electric vehicle for polar exploration. 
Every drop of wastewater is treated and reused, and all trash is flown out, leaving almost no trace on the environment. It's not just a station, it's a statement about what sustainable living in extreme conditions might look like in the future. So, who exactly lives and works in these stations, and how do they stay sane? Well, just wait until you hear about some of the traditions and festivals they've come up with, because life down here isn't all science and snow. Sure, there are scientists drilling ice cores and tracking the stars, but the average Antarctican might be a diesel mechanic, an IT specialist, a doctor, or even a cook making dinner for a hundred people. Each base is less a lab and more a small town, and every town needs people to keep it running. Life here runs in extremes. In summer, stations buzz with sunlight, supply flights, and hundreds of people are racing to make the most of the short, warm season. Then winter hits, the sun vanishes, the population drops, and isolation sets in. The internet slows to a crawl, fresh food disappears, and hydroponic greenhouses become the only splash of life and color for months on end. At Concordia Station, researchers say stepping inside one feels like stepping into another world. To fight the isolation, bases lean on tradition. At McMurdo, residents once staged a live rock concert called Ice Stock. At Concordia, crews celebrate Midwinter Day, their version of Christmas in June with a banquet, costumes, and messages beamed in from families and even heads of state. At Australia's Casey Station, the local bar, Splinters, brews its own beer. Even at the South Pole, where temperatures drop below minus 94 degrees Fahrenheit, crews organize talent shows to keep spirits up. Still, fun doesn't erase responsibility. Everyone pitches in to shovel snow, fix equipment, and keep the base alive. And yet, despite the isolation and danger, life goes on. These small communities keep science and humanity alive in the most unforgiving place on Earth. From giant cities like McMurdo to mobile bases like Holly 6. From Russia's frozen fortress at Vostok to Belgium's zero emission lab. Antarctica's research stations are more than just buildings. They're lifelines for science, engineering marvels, and test runs for humanity's future in space and beyond. So, which one impressed you the most? And would you try traveling to one of these for a season? Let us know in the comments. And if you want more journeys to the world's most extreme builds, make sure you're subscribed, because we've got plenty more stories like this coming soon.